Okay, so we were discussing something about igneous petrology, how various igneous rocks were formed and what are the various igneous rock and how to identify various types of igneous rocks. Okay, so in this session we are supposed to discuss something about the structure of igneous rocks. Okay, so now let us see something about the structure of igneous rocks. So, the structure of igneous rock, as we know each and every rock composition have a different structure. Some may be rounded, some may be square or some may be of hexagonal shape, some may be of some irregular shapes. So, some boulders are there, some cobble shapes. So, as we know different rocks have different structures. So, then we need to think why this happens. What might be the reason for this shape of the rock? There lies the thing that is the structure of igneous rocks. Yes. So as we know, these rocks are composed of various grains of minerals. That we have already discussed that rocks means it is the aggregate of minerals as we know. These are crystalline solids from atoms, chemical bonds into orderly structure. Yeah. That is the thing. The in these rocks, these components are also having a chemical bond. As we know. Suppose, say for example, this is a rock type and this might be another rock and this might be another rock. Various shapes are there. Okay, so one other is different from the other one. Why? Because it's that the atomic arrangements. There are various crystals. As we know, sometimes this will be of some small crystals will be inside this. Here we may have some blocky crystals like this. It may be composed of some bladed crystals or something like this. So it may be like that. Here, here it will be some hexagonal dodecahedron or something like that. So it is completely of this chemical bonds. That clearly indicates the structure of the rock. Okay. Then some rocks also contain mineraloids. As we have already discussed about what is mineral, what is mineraloids, everything. So why because is that they are very rigid, then they are mineral-like substance. Okay, mineraloids they are nothing but they are just the mineral-like substance, but they are not pure minerals. It may include some volcanic gases, then that lacks crystalline structure. Yeah, sometimes this volcanic gas, it's an important factor. Some igneous rocks may contain this volcanic gas, so it sometimes may have a possibility of losing what structure? Crystalline structure. Okay. Since there are some crystalline structures will be said there, then there are some amorphous, that is partial crystal. There are some amorphous structures that are there. So all these are the various types of structures that we are observing in igneous rock. Okay. So this will be an introduction section. Why this igneous rock is having a structure? Then this contains various minerals and various mineraloids. Then there is a chemical bond in between these minerals which forms the structure of any rock. Okay, that was the introduction for this. Then, now here you can see certain structures. Now you see here, for example, now you can see various blocks. You can see this is an alternative. That is, this is a light colored one and this is, here you can see it is a dark colored one and this again light color, so this is again dark color, so this is what we call as alternating band, okay, this is what we call as alternating band, okay, this is something that is alternating bands, okay, why because it is one is having a dark and there is having a dark light color, so you can see this end here. Here this will be completely of dark one and this will be completely of this light color. Again here you can see this will be completely serving as a dark and then here somewhat it is moving like this. Yeah, it will be light color. So this is an alternating bands of dark and light color. Okay. Then here you can see some sheeted structures. Yeah, this is actually some sheeted structure. You can easily identify individual ones here. Okay, this one, this you can identify. 
here also you can identify. This is actually another structure of rock. So this is how various structures we observe in field. In field we can clearly observe all these things. This is actually the image, how field looks like. That means, apart from the theory, when you are directly observing some rocks, this is the situation that you are observing. Okay, yes. Then now let's move to various other structures. Here you can see this is actually a flow structure. That is, here you can see this orange color. There is the volcanism. There is the volcanism is actually happening there. Then here you can see this is actually a flow structure. Okay. This is actually a flow structure. Okay. This is actually a flow structure. Why? Because the lava is completely flowing to this direction and it is being wired off here. Okay. Then here you can see something. This is actually joints. It can be called as joints. Mainly, they are columnar structures. Okay. Maybe call called as joints. Here you can see it will be like this. One here, one here, one the one is here. Okay, so this will be columnar joints. This is also another structure that we used to observe in the field. Okay, so now we will go in detail about what is a flow structure. We will go detail in what is a flow structure, what is joints, what is columnar joints, everything. In detail, we will be moving right here. Okay. Yes. So, now there are certain things that you have to keep in mind while going to the structure. That is it. There are certain factors which affect the structure of igneous rock. Always as we know, there will be a particular group of factors affecting each and every processes in the formation of various rocks as well as soil. There will be obviously some factors. One is composition of magma. Yeah, the first and most important point is the composition of magma. As we know, if a volcanism arises, if it is basaltic volcanism, then it will form particular one. If it is acidic means it will form some particular. If it is a neutral volcanism, then it will form some. So, depends upon the composition of magma, the formation of rocks also will be different. Basic, basic acidic, plutonic, like that. It will be always changing. Okay, basaltic volcanisms are the plutonic volcanisms are the numerous volcanisms are the. So it depends upon the composition of magma, how much mineral components is present, how much volatiles is present, how much gas content is present. So everything will be depends upon here. The next factor is viscosity of magma. Yeah, it's very important. Whether it is highly viscous, that means whether it can flow or whether it cannot flow. If it is highly viscous means it will be forming a particular type of rock group. If it is not much viscous means it will be hence flowing. So it will be forming some other group of rocks. That also is an important factor. Okay. Then the third most factor is that the temperature and pressure is obviously because as we know in the earth mantle. So this will be considered as the earth mantle portion. Okay. Then this mantle here the core. Okay. Here will be the crest. So as we know in this crust region, it will be of almost low temperature when as we go depth, the temperature as well as the pressure increases. So when such hot material is coming outside from the earth core, definitely it will be cooling and consolidating, isn't it? So temperature and pressure that plays a major role in affecting or it may affect the structure of various crystals. Okay. Then, next is the presence of various gases, yeah, that we have already discussed, the presence of various gases as well as the other water types. So, this magma, it is not completely of minerals, mineraloids or something, it may also contain some sort of gases, maybe CO2, NO2, since this rocks are composed of various gases or some entrapped gases may be present inside these rocks, when these rocks are melt due to high temperature and pressure in the earth crust, what will happen? This gas entrapped inside the rock also will be mixed up with this magma and which will be transported to the surface. There is a crust. Okay, that will be completely transported here. Then that will be consolidated and cooled. Cooled and consolidated to form various rocks. So again, this gas content and this volatile component will be present in the consolidated rock also. 
so it is also an important factor so mainly there are four factors i repeat composition of magma that is the first factor second factor is the viscosity of magma third is the temperature and pressure and fourth is the presence of gases and other volatiles so it will be very important that is the various factors affecting the igneous rock structures okay now let's move on to various structures so there are numerous structures present in igneous rock so first of all let us name all those things all right yeah so there are various structures they are nothing but various features developed on large scale in a body of an intrusion or an extrusion of igneous rock that is what we call a structure so structures one being in small scale yeah as i think here we have seen structures is actually a not scale it is a large scale that is it may extend kilometers okay so it is an identification or it is a pathfinder of various rocks so it will extend to kilometers and kilometers so as we know it is a large scale feature okay structure is a large scale feature all right yeah then now let's see about various types of structures that is first one is flow structure as we have already seen then there is another structure that is pillow structure then there is a rocky structure then there is a blocky structure then actually a spherulitic one then orbicular structure then pillow structure vesicular structure then amygdaloidal structures then rocky lava then sheet structure columnar structure pegmatitic structure okay so these are the main types of various structures that we observe in igneous rock all right now let's start one by one so first one is vesicular structure and amygdaloidal structure okay so this vesicular structure and amygdaloidal structure is somewhat we can relate each other why because yeah let's see the images first yeah here you can see in the first image there are numerous vesicles present simply i am saying you without the explanation here you can see various vesicles i hope you guys may know what might be the reason for this formation of vesicles in this rock yeah it is nothing but because of various gas molecules water molecules present here so as the rock cools and consolidates what will happen this gas molecules may escape this water molecules may escape so such spaces will be vacant that is what is known as vesicles this is known as vesicles this is known as vesicles so rocks which shows this vesicles is known as vesicular structure rocks which shows such vesicles is known as vesicular structure then when this vesicles here you can see vesicles when this vesicles are filled by some infillings here you can see a white color infilling here you cannot see much vesicles because that vesicles were filled by some kind of minerals some kind of minerals is filled by vesicular vesicles are completely filled by some kind of minerals this are known as amygdales this are known as amygdales the infillings the infilling material maybe calcium carbonate or something these materials are known as amygdales okay then rocks which is shown this amygdale so a rock which is having amygdales is known as amygdaloidal structure amygdaloidal okay amygdaloidal. yes that is amygdaloidal structure now we will see about the description part now i hope you know what is vesicles what is a vesicular structure what is amygdales and what is an amygdaloidal structure okay now let's see some theory that's nothing but when lava is heavily charged with the gases and the volatiles erupted on the surface as we have said a lava eruption the gases constituent escape from the magma as there is a decrease in the pressure yeah as we know in the surface crust the pressure is very high then when it is exposed to the outer surface pressure will be low pressure will be 
low. Then what will happen if this is a body means there are various numerous vesicles will be present. Why? Because the gas escaped due to decrease in pressure. Then near the top of the flows material empty cavities bubbles vesicles are formed which may be elliptical. Yeah. This is the shape of those vesicles. It may be elliptical, spherical, cylindrical or sometimes it may be irregular. We cannot predict that the vesicles should be like this, it should be like this, it should be like this, nothing like that. It may be of some regular or some irregular shape. Usually it will be some elliptical or orbital or spherical shapes. That's it. Then, the individual openings are known as vesicles. Yes, here you can see this will be known as vesicles. And the rock structure is known as vesicular structure. That is the rock which exhibits this structure is known as vesicular structure. Okay. Then, the vesicles this formed are filled with some low temperature secondary minerals. Yes. As we have said that, when these vesicles are filled with some infilling, that is some secondary minerals of low temperature. Okay. That may be of calcite, zeolite, chalcedony, etc. This may be the infillings. It may be. Usually, the infillings will be calcite, CaCO3. Sometimes, it may be of zeolite or chalcedony or something, etc. These infillings are known as amygdales. You can see these infillings are known as amygdales. And the rock structure which shows or which exhibits these amygdales are known as here amygdaloidal structure. Okay, so vesicular structure where is vesicles present in amygdaloidal structure where amygdales are present. Now you can again see the images so it will be more clear for you. Here this is actually a rock having vesicles that is nothing but cavities or some bubbles present here that is why because the gas present in this rocks which have been disappeared or it has been exhausted why because of the low pressure then these bubble spaces are being infilled by some other kind of secondary minerals having low temperature they may be of CaCO3 then CO lights or something etc okay then that is known as amygdales, amygdales. Then the rock which is exposed or rock which is having amygdales is known as amygdaloidal structure. Okay, I hope this structure is clear for you.